Uh, so I think we should not be so rattled by some guy saying that, some State Department spokesman saying something like that. The ability to understand international affairs, I mean, there is a, that has declined. You know, so this week in Raja Mandala, you've, uh, in your column, you discussed a very interesting thing, you've touched on it in past columns as well, is the, what actually what India thinks the West thinks of it, the way we're filtering information or the way we're looking at discussions on India and the West is one narrow and very self-centric, particularly in self-centered, particularly in the context of America. Could you just expand on that, how this touchiness of imagining that sort of some index comes out or State Department makes one yeah. pro forma statement and yeah. India gets all in a tizzy about it, including us, you know, in the media with our headlines. Yeah. No, I think there is not enough uh, study or careful examination of the Western policies because there is an inherent uh, assumption that we know what the West is because uh, we think we read the English language. Uh, we don't know how its structures operate uh, and we don't pay really, there's not enough. Uh, it's amazing in all our international studies uh, department, there are very few European studies, American studies departments. Uh, so really the knowledge about how the modern capitalist economies of the West operate and what are the kind of interests that drive them uh, to engage the world not enough study. So what happens is, uh, because we we are love the conspiracy theory, we are, want to be victims. We want to be seen as you know being you know there is people are out to get us. Uh, that attitude, then you just believe the simplest possible idea, uh, rather than seeing uh, they have their interests, they have their contradictions, they have their hypocrisies. Of course, Americans are not the only ones who are hypocrites. Uh, all states uh, engage with it. So I think a little more relaxed if you're third largest economy, third largest military. Uh, so I think we should not be so rattled by some guy saying that, some State Department spokesman saying something like that. But I think look at the big picture, understand the competing interests uh, within the Western democracies. So democracy argument is only one, a minor one. The economy argument and the business argument, the defense argument, so the multiplicity of the vectors that come together to produce uh, an outcome. Uh, so I think we should be more relaxed and more intensely focused on the structures uh, of the Western countries. You know, there's a contradiction. It's in one sense, we're looking at India has become much more, its relative weight in the international system has grown. We talk in one sense about foreign policy much more. You touched on this in earlier columns as well. YouTube channels galore, there's, you know, but at the same time, you think there is an in, we're becoming more insular. There was a much more, at least in the in the sort of opinion makers or whatever, talk, whether it's newspaper op-ed columns or think tanks or versions of that. There was a sense of engaging with the world, not just in terms of what the Ministry of External Affairs is doing, but in terms of knowledge producers. And do you think that has come down? And we're only sort of we're even looking at the West in this in this case, America arguably the most important country in the world, and certainly to us, uh, at least through the lens of our either domestic yeah. politics or domestic yeah. nationalism. No, I, I think there is the paradox, you know, it's a quite, uh, I mean, I would say, if you go back to India of the 50s, uh, there was strong impulse of internationalism, both from the left uh, and the Nehruvian worldview. Uh, there was much greater engagement uh, with the uh, international uh, political parties, for example. The left parties used to be part of the global communist network. Uh, the Congress party actually had set up the global, uh, you know, Indian uh, overseas Congress. Uh, the freedom movement had produced a lot of connections. The socialists, for example, the India had a large number of socialist parties. They were all linked to the, the socialist international. So there was a sense of political connect. So now what's happened is it's really the BJP is a rising party, but their internationalism has really largely been limited to the uh, limited to the uh, diaspora, but they're not trying to create a party and engage the rest of the world. Uh, but but I think what's happened is the, the government's positions seem to dominate. Uh, that whatever the MEA says, or whatever their foreign officers say, uh, that that kind of narrows the filter and the, the amplification of this narrow spectrum of debate. So we become a hothouse of opinion uh, rather than uh, and then we've not really, the rise of India has not been complemented by rising the capabilities to study the rest of the world. Uh, so I think together these factors have produced this paradox 
India is more globalized. India is more connected, uh, but uh, its ability to understand international affairs, I mean, there is a, that has declined. You know, one more thing, we, you, we, I'll get to that, the final question. But before that, you know, there is, as a corollary to the last question, we see, one, you see this sort of so-called democracy index and all being played up in one sense. And that may have as much to do with India's domestic politics as it does. You know, there are reasons and, you know, the way we cover politics and the interests here. But the second is also that, do you think that it is also because, again, so much of knowledge production is driven by the government in one sense or the other? that even things that we conceive of, you also end up amplifying things which may not be that important in a positive sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other side of the coin, which is, I mean, say a, a, a handshake or, or someone says India is the rising power as a part of a business summit, which maybe that you also tend to take the positive too seriously without a clear yeah. head, yeah. just as you overblow the negative. No, I, I think there are problems on both sides. One, I think in the West, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, there is acquired a lazy liberalism in the West, as if they know all the answers. So you have these activist groups, you have so-called you know index makers, who with sheer random uh, sense, uh, you know, list out who is democracy, who is happy, which is pretty uh, stupid. I mean, in terms of what they do, but these are the very same countries. I mean, in the Cold War, were ready to support any kind of uh, dictatorship in order to come to the Soviet Union. That is the record. Look at Afghanistan. Uh, it was the West, the entire West came down to support the jihadi groups against the Soviet, pro-Soviet regime in Afghanistan. Now you produce the Taliban, you produce the jihad, you produce 9-11, you produce Osama bin Laden, and you produce violence in India. In India, when I came to Delhi in 1974, I didn't see a single policeman with a gun. But what happened in 79, in the 80s, the violence that has engulfed South Asia, now they come and say, oh, you're not democratic enough. You're not, uh, you know, you, what is this? Why is there so much fundamentalism here? You started it, my friend. Yeah. And there's not a one sense of contrition in the West. Yeah. What they've done to the subcontinent by promoting jihadis in Afghanistan and by supporting Ziaul Haq, yeah. who Islamized Pakistan, and the backlash that, that we've seen uh, for that. So there is no reflection on that. It's always, I know the best, I'll tell you what to say. This should not make us anti-Western. Okay. That, that yeah. we still abide by certain core values, but we should be able to engage with them. Look, don't be stupid. Just because you're making an index doesn't mean, uh, you know, uh, you know we, we have to accept your logic. Yeah. Uh, because the same, the Dutch, yeah. they came to Indonesia saying, we want to take back Indonesia after 45. Yeah. They wanted to come back to... Vietnam and take Vietnam back. So their record is so dismal. So I'm not going to judge ourselves on their basis. But there are battles for democracy. I think those have to be fought within. They're not going to be fought by outsiders. You know, final question. There's a lot else in the column. Everyone should look at it on Trump, on what the upcoming US election means, what India is missing out. Everyone read it. It is on the IndianExpress.com. And there should be a link in the description wherever you're watching this video. So, you know, final thing, just as an aside, is that, you know, there's so much, you know, there is a particular, there's an old joke, you know, South Delhi and South Bombay, when the American election comes, they say, Hamara president, you know, they're kind of these yeah. sort of elite and claims within India. Yeah. Do you think part of it is also that, I mean, it's also, I mean, it's especially in the case of America, the immense American soft power that, you know, John Stewart's monologue on YouTube, like we consume American politics now in many ways directly from American sources, which have their own this thing rather than from an Indian lens. Do you think for a certain for a certain kind of audience, which is not insignificant in India now, uh, that is an issue going forward or that, 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 that sort of taken over that space without it having the intervention of our lens or our interests in the intervening that kind of information coming to us? No, exactly. I mean, I, I think the, the challenge for us has been Partly one problem is we think we're part of the U.S. electorate. We're not. We don't have a vote in the U.S. elections, but because of the American media, everyone is involved in it. And assume somehow we have a say. We don't have a say. America is a, is a, is a polity on its own right. And politics is very deep there. Divisions are very deep. So I think there's no alternative to study the internal arguments in the U.S. Uh, what are the issues in play? What is the argument on immigration, for example? Why is Trump saying after 30 years of Americans telling us globalization is the best? Biden and Trump have told us 
Sorry, it doesn't work. So the arguments have changed in the US. But if we don't pay enough attention to their internal arguments and how their worldviews are changing and it's being contested in different ways, uh, I think there is a, a problem because there's not enough study. I think our own media, as I said, uh, they're replaying what Washington Post is saying about India, what uh, FT is saying about India, rather than uh, reaching out to the uh, debates there and explaining the, the internal uh, dynamic there. Right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, read the piece. It's on the IndianExpress.com. And we'll see you next week, sir. Thank you so much.